The late 90s to mid 2000s is what I'd consider to be the golden age of gaming as a whole. By this point developers have become more comfortable with creating fully 3D games that weren't just tech demos with awful controls. There was a lot of experimentation in the already established genres and this led to groundbreaking titles that created a new standard for games moving forward. One genre in particular that I would argue was at its peak during this time was rhythm games. And of course it's impossible to not talk about Guitar Hero as being the most recognisable and iconic, at least in the mainstream. Although if we jump back a few years, the first truly influential rhythm game was about a rapping dog who tries to get a flower to be his girlfriend and learns to fight with an onion. Parappa can be credited for initially starting the rise of rhythm gaming which led to more wacky and fun rhythm titles like Space Channel 5, Bust a Groove and Samba de Amigo. Although while most of these games are fairly well known, I'll be taking a look at a more obscure rhythm game released back in 2001. <laughs> Guitar Man is a rhythm action game where the player takes control of you one. A young boy gets told by his talking dog Puma that he's the last of the Guitar Man bloodline and must revive the Guitar's true power by going through 10 stages of bosses. Yeah, the story really isn't all that detailed, but it's simple and gets straight to the point. It has a similar style to Parappa, where in between each stage is a short cutscene to help bridge the gap between levels, which I think is fine. Look, when you're going from a Japanese city to a dense forest to goddamn space, I feel like we need a little bit of context. On a quick side note though, this game graphically looks phenomenal. Despite its age, the game is still visually appealing, although that's probably due to every colour that exists is being displayed at once. So after starting a new game, we get a tutorial which gives the basic rundowns. Now because like every tutorial there is, is drawn out and boring, you'd think this one would be just as bad. Well, yes, but actually no. Guitar Man immediately starts off with this chill beat that makes his tutorial less monotonous and makes sure that the player has the mechanics down. Each boss you one fights is split up into three phases. The charge phase is when the player builds up their health by playing the song which is done by moving the left analog stick to match the line and pressing circle in time with the notes. The battle phase is a back and forth where the player and the boss take turns of playing the song and dodging each other's attacks using the four face buttons. And the final phase occurs when the boss's health is low and the player must finish off the song while trying not to die from missing too many notes beforehand. You know, now that I've said the plot for this game I lied earlier, it, uh, it just keeps making less sense. Like, you think if someone told you that you were the last in an ancient bloodline thing, wouldn't it be you one's parents telling him this? Was his father Katari Man? Instead, it gets left up to the dog to tell us all this, who also turns into a fucking robot after a demon baby warps in you one's bedroom. Well, this is the first stage, and already these tunes are just sick. It's a good song to ease the player in and confirms that we're in for some crazy Japanese creativity if the opening title didn't convince you already. But it's stage 2 where this game really starts to shine. I'll admit I'm finding it pretty hard to give this game some proper critique since there's not much to comment on in terms of gameplay. The other pillar holding this game up though is of course the music and holy shit every stage offers something catchy and unique. So stage 2 is basically just perfection, I think it captures the game's style the best. I mean we've got a flying piano UFO invasion which can only be stopped by playing guitar against this funky Eurobeat, with a crowd of mind controlled spectators in a colourful city and a robot dog. This is where things start to step up a gear with a much faster paced song than before and introduces longer lines to follow with sharper turns and longer dodge sequences which can be pretty tough for a new player. The fact that this was the demo level shown off in official PlayStation magazine highlights how confident the developers were in it as being the best stage to convince people to buy this game in the first place. You see what I think sets this game apart compared to most other rhythm games is that the music isn't tied down to a certain style or genre of music. Parappa the Rappa of course sticks to rap, Space Channel 5 is mostly jazz and Buster Groove focuses on disco hip hop music. Guitar Man has a bit of everything, with the third stage delivering some blues with this Elton John B guy. Yeah, I couldn't think of anything better. <laughs> 
Without a doubt, one of my favorite songs in the game. There's just so many amazing guitar solos accompanied with this funky trumpet and choir. In terms of gameplay, there's definitely more notes than in the previous stage, but as someone who's played this game for over 6 years at this point, it's not as much of a challenge for me at least, unless it's Master's Play, which still gives me trouble. Yeah, I forgot to mention there's more than one difficulty in this game. You can choose from normal or hard in the options, although if you beat the game you can get access to Master's Play, which makes Guitari Man probably one of the hardest games ever. I'm telling you, through the fire and the flames, yeah that is nothing on Master's Play. This shit is fucking crazy. Unfortunately, stage 4 and 5 is where I think the game is at its weakest. Neither of these songs are particularly good, and I know I'm being super subjective here, but I don't think even the majority of people who played this game would disagree. The gameplay has nothing to get excited about either. Both stages are fairly easy, with stage 4 focusing only on dodging, and stage 5 just having a bunch of long and slow notes. At least I got some Ratchet 2 vibes from two huge robots fighting on a moon. So by now you one has to go to Planet Kataru to save the people and defeat the bad guy Zoe, because, again, the dog is telling him all this. After they crash land on the planet, they decide to make a campfire, and stage 6 begins with you one trying to impress this girl with his guitar skills. And you know what? Th this is a pretty good fucking song. It serves as a nice way to slow down the pace for a while from all this chaos. In fact, a lot of people would say it's the best song, although I personally prefer the alternate version which will be coming up soon. It's by this point the story kicks into overdrive and we end up going from a calm beach to a concentration camp with musical skeletons. Whoa! Hey guys, ain't it cold with no skin on? I know I've said this for other stages earlier, but this is probably my favourite. The music is just so intense, which perfectly complements the scene of you one having to dodge without being able to transform into Guitari Man. Then this Spanish guitar kicks in against a bunch of different and unique instruments from each of the Sandbone Trio which just makes this entire stage a stroke of genius. There's a crowd behind you cheering you on as you take on these hard as nails guitar solos and dodge insane patterns which makes it the best back and forth duel this game has to offer. I think the true way to play this game is on Master's Play as you've got just enough health to make it through the first onslaught and then go on to face off in one of the toughest stages in the game. The last three levels is where the stakes are raised as now with the people saved all that's left are just two more guitars to capture and the final boss. Stage 8 introduces some gothic opera rock music I think, and takes the challenge to the next level. This is where I've been stuck on the Master's Play difficulty while at the time of writing this. But even on normal play, this guy... isn't a pushover. Honestly, I can't fault this stage. It gives a nice challenge with a few decent guitar riffs and effectively sets the tone for these last stages. With only one more guitar left, you one finds himself up against Kira, the girl from the beach earlier who reveals that she's actually working for Zoe. Stage 9 begins with a short fight between the two against this pretty good rock music, which unfortunately gets cut short after you one loses the will to live. Despite his friends encouraging him to continue fighting against the girl he likes, he instead starts playing the literal legendary theme, which is the better version of the acoustic one from earlier in my opinion. This song is actually incredible, hell it makes me want to learn guitar just so I can play this song. You know this is why Guitar Man is such a masterpiece, as if the gameplay wasn't already engaging and fun to play, the music is just on point. Even the two weakest songs in my opinion still have their merits, but every other song is fantastic and it's what makes this game so memorable, even to the people who have never played the game before. Welcome to Gitaru Man. I've seen this game when I was a kid, but I never actually played it and I was just remembered about it and I'm like, yes. Oh. Holy. Yeah. Yes indeed. The more I think about it, I'm seeing the deeper meaning behind this stage, a message that music should be used to bring people together, to celebrate together. 
and not to kill each other by electrocuting them to death. So after securing the last Katari, we come up against the final boss Zoe, except this time he showed up in a giant mech. But then U1 goes Devil Trigger and we take the final fight into space. The game goes from its light-hearted, colourful style into the dark and serious final stage, and it's insane. I know I keep saying this, but even on normal difficulty, these notes are pretty tricky. I don't even want to attempt this fight on Master's Play because that would only make this game the Dark Souls of rhythm games, am I right? And of course, the music fits this stage perfectly. Both U1 and Zoe pulling off ridiculous guitar solos while airborne just makes for the best climatic finale you could ask for this game. It's over, Zoe! With all that said and done, I guess the only real thing left to do is to go through the game again on Master's Play, which I've already described as being the hardest thing in a game ever. But would you believe me if I told you they even added a freaking multiplayer mode? I suppose it's only logical to assume that there would be one due to the health bars giving off that sort of fighting games impression. But uh, damn, I almost forgot to talk about it. It even supports the multi-tap. 4 player Guitar Man action, Jesus why is there no gameplay of this anywhere online? So it's pretty similar to the single player, except the second player gets to play as the boss and play the song from their perspective, which is pretty cool to be fair. It's a nice little extra game mode since the standard game is pretty short, although I think it could have been fleshed out more. But anyway, that was Guitar Man, one of my absolute favourite games on PS2. If you managed to stick around to this point then honestly thanks for watching. I have no idea what this video was, I was just rambling on about this obscure game that I love since 2013 but I've never really talked about it until now. I hope maybe I convinced you to check it out. I know not everyone watching this might be into rhythm games but I think this game is at least worth playing at some point even if it's just a few stages. Unfortunately this game hasn't been touched since its PSP re-release in 2006 but hopefully one day we get a sequel. And with that being said, thanks for watching.